So this is Sophia, the transcendent waveform analog oscillator brand new from Chaos Devices. Now I actually recently bought Odessa, which is their digital additive oscillator, and I've started planning a video about that, which I'm still going to do, but in the meantime Chaos got in touch and asked if I'd be interested in looking at Sophia, so of course I said yes. Uh, I've literally just got it, I'm installing it in my pallet case, and I'm going to spend a week getting to know it and I'm going to record the patches that I made during that first week and hopefully show off some of the musical applications of it, explore what it can do, try and look at the full range of sounds you can coax out of it. So I'm going to try and make sure Sophia is the star of the show. I'll give you a quick walkthrough before I get too deep into the patches. I'll try and explain how it works, what the main controls are. So I think it's one of those modules where if you understand what it's doing sonically, you get a lot more out of it. But anyway, without any further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so before I get too stuck into the patches, I just want to take a little bit of time to describe the synthesis method that Sophia uses and run through the front panel controls. I think the key to getting the best sounds out of Sophia is to really understand how the synthesis works inside. It's something I haven't come across before. It's called FOF synthesis, stands for Formant Donned Formantique. It was an 80s computer music synthesis method for digital synthesis, which has been adapted for analog Eurorack. Um, never really come across anything quite like it before. Uh, it's kind of a little bit, takes a little bit of getting your head around, but once you do, it's fairly straightforward. The basic principle is you have a fundamental oscillator, which is what we're seeing on the scope here. In this case, it's kind of a, a slightly saturated sine wave. Every cycle of that fundamental oscillator spawns two ripple elements which are essentially additional oscillators that oscillate at a higher frequency and are mixed in with it. Because they start with every cycle of the wave, they all start together so they're always phase coherent. It means they're always kind of related uh, to that master frequency which means they're always in tune when you play at different pitches. Although you can actually switch off that tracking and you've got quite a great degree of control of how those ripple elements behave within each cycle of that master wave. Now it's much easier to kind of get your head around this when you listen to it and look at the scope. So I'm just going to run through the front panel controls and then we'll look at one ripple element and see what effect the various parameters have on the sound. So control wise we have in the centre here um, the traditional VCO pitch CV input which is volt per octave. Uh, there's an octave select switch and there's a fine tune control that goes up and down one octave. And I'm listening to the main output. We've also got outputs for the fundamental, which is the, the pure sine wave that's not saturated. And we've got individual outputs for the ripple element in here as well. We have a couple of controls here that control the mix of these three elements. This one controls the mix between the fundamental and the two ripple elements, which has CV input as well. This one controls the balance of the two ripple elements. So with this at 12 o'clock, we're getting the two ripple elements equally. And if I was to bring them in with this control, we'd get an, e an equal mix with these both at 12 o'clock of the fundamental and the two ripple elements. But let's just keep it on the fundamental for the moment. The controls for the ripple elements are identical. There's A on the left and B on the right. And I'll come to those in a second. There are also two FM inputs, pitch FM and global FM, which I'll approach in one of the later patches. Um, let's just listen to that fundamental tone. So with the octave switch, I can go up and down as you'd expect and the uh, fine tune does what you'd expect as well. So let's have a listen to ripple element A which is not doing anything really at the moment but as I bring up this ratio you'll notice it's kind of superimposing these additional sine waves. The higher the ratio, the higher the frequency of this extra sine wave, but notice it's all still phase coherent with the main wave, so the fundamental pitch isn't changing. We're just getting these 
harmonics. It's going to sound slightly filtery but slightly different. Now the damping control is this fader. Now this, what this does is it kind of fades out during each cycle. It's kind of like a like a decay envelope almost for that ripple element. And with that minimized, you just get a tiny little bit of that ripple at the start of each cycle. And as the damping reduces, it kind of fills its way through and you can see it affecting both halves of that cycle. What the warp does is it compresses or expands that wave during the cycle, that frequency during the cycle. So if I reduce the warp, then these early oscillations are, are more widely spaced than the later ones. And likewise the other way, if I increase the warp, it compresses these oscillations at the start and then spaces out again. Easy to see on these lower frequencies. As the warp decreases, you see it's kind of spacing out on that side. So between the warp, the ratio, and the damping, we've got quite a lot of control over how much effect this ripple element has on the fundamental. And we can also switch from sine to square, which has a much more harmonically rich kind of effect. And there are two of these, so we can pan over to the other side. Let's just get something set up with ripple element B. Let's use the sign on this one. And the square on A. And we can mix between them. And of course you can CV this mix and you can CV all of these parameters. And you can see just by adjusting these controls, we've got this huge palette of kind of sync, filter, wave shaping, wave folding sounds with no external filtering going on at all. Quite a huge palette to play with. Okay, for this first patch I'm going to keep things super simple. I'm just going to look at one ripple element, ripple element A here, and I'm going to look at how we can coax some kind of resonant low-pass filter-esque sounds out of Sophia without using any external modules at all. What I've got set up is a sequence from the Mosquare, which is providing the pitch information. Um, I've got that gate output triggering an AD envelope in stages, which is controlling the Danny Sound MMVCA over here. And that's all you're listening to at the moment. So that's just a saturated fundamental bass tone, no ripple elements mixed in at all as yet. And just a simple little sequence churning away there. Um, if I mix in ripple element A, so I've got 50-50 fundamental and ripple elements, and I'm mixed to purely element A on here. Not too much effect at the moment, I've got the damping all the way down, I've got the ratio all the way down, and I've got the warp in the middle. If I start to bring up the ratio and push up the damping a bit. These two in tandem act a bit like the cutoff frequency and resonance. The damping's a bit like the resonance control, and the ratio's a bit like the filter frequency. There's no filtering happening here, this is just adding this ripple element to the fundamental. Let's take the decay portion of that envelope and use that to CV the ratio so we get this more kind of classic filtery kind of enveloped sound. And warp has an interesting effect on this sound as well. It kind of changes the character of the resonance because it kind of squashes or expands the onset part of that ripple element. We can get some more kind of almost FME. Slightly wilder tones with the warp at those extremes. That's quite a cool sound that's somewhere between a filter, FM, and wave folding. Pull that damping down a bit. Let's pull the resonance or the ratio down a bit rather. I'm just going to take this random stepped voltage that I've got from stages. It's just a random LFO which is triggered by the same gate. Let's pop that into the warp CV, attenuated slightly through quadrant. That'll sort of change the character on every note. Let's just bring that. Let's give it a 
little bit of spring reverb for a bit of space. So just from this one ripple element, and pretty much the raw output, we get this huge range of filtery kind of slightly acidy, slightly FME kind of tones. So one of the cool things about Sophia is you've got individual outputs for the two ripple elements as well as the main output. So you can actually treat it as three oscillators in one and do some clever stuff using different envelopes and VCAs for each of those outputs. So what I've got here is a patch with Pamela's new workout generating three different Euclidean trigger patterns, which are triggering three different AD envelopes set up in stages. The first one is just triggering this fundamental output through the Danny Sound MMVCA, which is what you're listening to now, just pulsing away this low note in the background. And if I take ripple element A, I've got the second envelope firing another VCA up here. And if I take this other VCA that I've got set up here and take ripple element B, then I've got a fourth output from Pamela's new workout, which is on a much slower clock division, which is triggering a switch, which is adding a bit of offset voltage to the ratio of CV input here, which means I'm alternating this between a, a, f a fifth and a minor seventh above the root note on alternate bars. Basically, the ratio will let you tune in the kind of pitch above the, f the fundamental. Now I've got all three of these VCA outputs going into blinds and I've got a little bit of level modulation on the two ripple element parts from two LFOs from Oct, just so they're kind of rising and falling very subtly in the mix just to keep it a little bit more interesting. And if I take that mix of all these three oscillator outputs, remember this is all just one module, all, all just coming out of Sophia, add a bit of reverb. I've got some drums triggered from some other outputs on PAMS. pitch CV input just connected to the uh, BeatStep Pro so I can transpose this kind of effectively a mini sequence up and down. And it gets even more fun if you start playing with the warp. Get these nice kind of zappy effects. So just by getting a bit creative with envelopes and VCAs, you can turn, kind of turn this into a three-part synth. Pretty cool. This is an ambient patch that uses the Moskwa sequencer driving Sophia for the melody. And then I'm using a clock divider and a sample and hold to grab pitches from that same sequence which are being fed to Odessa in three voice mode. And that's creating these kind of shifting three-part chords which are harmonically and rhythmically related to the main sequence but are kind of shifting polymetrically underneath it. There's quite a lot going on in this patch, so I might do a fuller breakdown of it in a separate video. But for now I'm just going to let it play out for a bit while I mess around and give you a little listening break.
Okay, with this patch I just want to explore making a really gnarly, aggressive, overdriven kind of Reese bass sound. Um, at the moment you're just listening to a bit of ripple element A, uh, affecting the main fundamental tone. Um, I've got on this CV input for the ratio, I've got actually four different speed LFOs from Oct going into the dope for sequential switch. And each time the note changes, it'll switch to a different one of those LFOs so we get these different speeds of modulation on each note. And on ripple element B, if I just mix over to that, I've just got a kind of fixed ratio square which gives this kind of extra higher harmonic. So let's just get a little blend of those two. Now this is running through the Danny Sound Multimode Ladder Filter, fully open so it's not actually filtering anything yet, and it's going through the spring reverb just for a little bit of atmosphere with the digital spring brick. If I bring this filter down to kind of get some of that gnarly energy off, deepen it up slightly. Now another thing I'm going to do is take the fundamental output here into the mixer and just bring that into this. So this is the low sine wave, just to give it an extra bit of bass weight with that pure sine being mixed in. And to make it even more aggressive, I'm going to run it through the Danny Sound Tambour wave folder. Let's just go into there and then run that into the filter. Let me just open the filter back up again and hear the effect of this wave folding. much more kind of chainsawy sound. Let's filter that back down again. And now let's add a bit of modulation to the filter. This is just a kind of complex LFO from the new systems instruments inertia being modulated by the quad LFO. If I bring some feedback up on the spring reverb. Kind of background wash. And I can just play with this uh, mix of the two ripple elements. And while you've probably heard from the other patches that Sophia can make this incredibly complex range of sounds on its own, this just goes to show when you start adding external wave folding and filtering to the mix, you get this even richer palette. Okay, so in this patch I'm going to look at the FM capabilities of Sophia. There are two FM inputs, Pitch FM and Global FM. The manual is a little bit vague on what the difference is, but it does say that Pitch FM preserves the shape of the waveform, while Global FM preserves the overall spectrum, mainly affecting the frequency of the bass tone. Now to start with, I'm just going to listen to the fundamental output, the pure sine wave, which is running through the Optimix LPG from Make Noise. That's being pinged by a 16th note um, clock from Pamela's new workout. That's also driving the music thing Turing Machine, which is giving us this uh, locked pitch sequence, which I've quantized and is going to the pitch input Sophia. I've got it running through a little bit of spring reverb just to give it a little bit of space. And let's start by taking, I've got a copy of that same pitch sequence going into this one new um, VCO from IntelliGel here. Let's try pitch FM. So this, this other oscillator is tracking the same pitch sequence, but tuned differently. As I bring up this attenuator, you start to hear that kind of classic FM sound. Let's just play with this pitch, the ratio effectively. And it's quite easy to dial in a nice musical ratio like this, which sounds pretty cool. Now I believe these are exponential FM, so it gets quite extreme as you get up to the maximum end of this. Get this more kind of metallic clanking sounds. And let's switch to the global FM, which will probably have much the same effect when it's just a pure sine wave. Can't really hear too much difference. But I think it'll start to get a bit more pronounced when we bring in some of the ripple elements. So let's firstly switch to the main output, which will be the saturated sine wave, which will immediately give us a bit more harmonic content. You can hear how much more metallic and kind of ringing that is. I'm just going to bring this ratio down a bit. And let's bring this. I'm just going to dial in a slightly musical interval. Yeah, that sounds okay. Now let's bring in a little bit of the ripple element. I'm mixed the ripple element A only. If I crossfade in a bit of that. See, that's already affecting the spectrum quite a bit. And by playing with the ratio. 
nice, quite dramatic effect on the sound. Warp also has a fair bit of effect as well. It's a bit zappier as you increase the warp. So let's modulate this. I'm going to use the pulses expander on the Turing machine to get some rhythmic gates. I'm going to use a couple of these in R&D step, which will generate some random voltages. I'm just going to take a couple of these at random. Let's just try one and three into the trigger inputs. And then let's take this random voltage output into the ratio CV. And let's take the next one into the warp CV input. So basically whenever these pulses fire, which is kind of rhythmically related to the sequence, we'll get some random values to CV that. The other thing that's quite nice to try, because we've got these two ripple elements, is just move over to element B. And I've got this one on the square wave mode, so it's a bit more dramatic, and let's just kind of dial that ratio into something that's quite obvious, and then mix back to A again. Now I can use another one of these pulse outputs. Again, I'll just pick this 4 plus 7 one that's pulsing quite occasionally. I'm going to take that directly into the crossfade elements mix CV input. And what, what that'll do is every time that pulse fires, it'll give us a burst of CV, which will switch to element B, basically. So we get these little, this little rhythmic switch to the... And if we take another... Let's take an LFO from stages. Slow one here. I'll move that into ratio of element B. slowly sweep that and now if we just play with this ratio again and play with the octave switch we've got quite a huge range of very interesting metallic FM kind of tones here which range from quite melodic Tonal. So for this last patch, I'm just using a simple sequence from the BeatStep Pro. I'm just chucking a bunch of modulation at a few parameters in Sophia to create this really nice, evolving, very analog sounding sequence. Just talk you through what's going on. There's no external filtering at all. This is all just being generated from Sophia, going straight through the MMVCA, a tiny bit of spring reverb, and a tape echo on this effects pedal here. I'll go through the modulation that's happening. Um, from stages, I've got a slow LFO to the elements mix, which is basically gradually crossfading between A and B and back again. I have a short decay envelope to the ratio of ripple element A, which is just enveloping that slightly. Per step, I'm triggering some random values using R&D step, which I'm feeding to a few different things. I've got a couple of unipolar ones to control the decay and release on the main envelope just to vary the lengths and decays of some of those notes. I've got bipolar going to the warp input of ripple element A. And I've got another bipolar going to contour 1, which is slewing the output of that sequencer to give me a bit of portamento. Just getting some slightly random portamento times. I've got a couple of LFOs from Oct, which are both going through attenuators on the quadrat, and I've got one controlling the mix between the fundamental and the ripple elements, just gra just very slightly moving between that, not going to the extremes. And I have the other one going to the damping on ripple element B. And I've got a little bit of self-patching. I'm taking the impulse output of ripple element A, which is basically the kind of envelope of that ripple element decay within each cycle, and I'm using that to modulate the ratio of ripple element B just for a bit more sonic variety. So 
that's just about it for this video. Hope it's given you a decent flavour of what Sophia is capable of. I really do think it sounds genuinely unique. There's no other modules that use this method of synthesis that I'm aware of, and I think it'd be pretty difficult to replicate it with a combination of other modules. It does have a relatively simple set of controls, but it's capable of a huge tonal range without using anything external, and it really does come alive with modulation as well. You can get even more extreme, or you can tone it down a bit if you need to, if you pair it with filters and wave folders, or use FM. Um, obviously, being a Chaos Devices module, it looks great. It's got amazing build quality, the receiver inputs for everything, the manual's excellent, and it sounds very distinctive. I'd say if you're looking for a sort of flexible, traditional bread and butter oscillator, this probably isn't it. But if you're looking for something original to add to your sonic palette, this ticks a lot of boxes. So thanks for watching. As usual, if you've enjoyed it, can you leave a comment, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll be back again soon. Cheers. Bye.